Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. So we're going to go through some statistics because every slideshow should at least have some. But but these are really important, and and they're important for a couple of reasons because I think sometimes we think about the other uh, disease states that. Um, Arthur mentioned in terms of heart disease and cancer and you know sort of we know someone probably our neighbor or someone in our family who is uh, affected with those diseases but I think sometimes we don't appreciate how many people are actually affected with um, in, in various stages of Alzheimer's. So Alzheimer's is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States and this is not meant to be a downer it's just sort of reality of where we're at and as we live longer and longer these statistics um, continue to go up. But more than five million Americans have Alzheimer's um, if you can believe it, it was only about a hundred years ago that Alzheimer's was first identified and recognized, and a mere 21 years ago when the first drug Cognex came out to actually treat some of the symptoms. So it's a relatively new sort of disease, if you will, uh, in terms of its discovery, in terms of resources being uh, dedicated to finding a cure. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. Um, uh, many of you uh, probably remember one of our, fam our famous um, and maybe our best, that's my bias, uh, President Reagan. Uh, 20 years ago, he announced that he had Alzheimer's, and that was just 20 years ago. So it really has sort of through um, awareness um, of, of individuals like himself have really sort of brought this to the forefront. Um, one of the important, uh, if you can just go back for a moment, Arthur, thanks. Um, one of the important pieces here too, and I'll elaborate on this in the next slide, is that Alzheimer's is very much a family uh, disease in that the family is very, very involved typically in caring for the loved one. Um, uh, it's a very intensive uh, um, uh, disease to, to treat and sort of stay ahead of. Um, and uh, we'll talk about the actual numbers, but um, over 15 million people in the United States actually care or somehow identify themselves as a caregiver um, for uh, individuals with Alzheimer's dementia. Next slide. Medicare, Medicaid, um, um, although they don't pay for a lot of things, to, to Arthur's point, um, they do um, allocate dollars or, or account for dollars that go toward treating individuals with Alzheimer's. So even though they might not treat Alzheimer's if you fall because you were in an unsafe situation and you fracture your hip, those dollars there, the 150 billion, are sort of accounted for in those numbers. So um, when you sort of think about long-term care, a lot of money in this country is being paid for with state and federal monies uh, to treating uh, this disease. And by the way, a tremendous, most of those Medicaid dollars are nursing home dollars. Yes. As, as, as I always mention to clients who are so embarrassed that they might have to qualify for mass health, oh my God, you know. And I said, well, you know, it's over 70% of all the people in all the beds and all the nursing homes are on Medicaid now. So most of these dollars are Medicaid dollars. And women are really at the center of these statistics. Um, I, and I should pause and say it's so refreshing to see such a diverse group here tonight of all ages um, because it, it's really important that you sort of understand that and, and you'll, uh, it, it's just, it's wonderful to, to really see the diverse group. But women are really at the center of the, met, uh, the Alzheimer's statistics. One in six uh, women in the United States in her 60s is likely to have Alzheimer's. And actually one in 11 will have breast cancer. And so when I first saw that statistic, I was like, really? Because I can think of so many people that, you know, have been affected by breast cancer. But when you sort of, again, think of the numbers, it's just, it's, it's more common than, unfortunately, we want to think about. And, and women are two and a half times more likely than men to be considered intensive caregivers. And that sort of follows maybe sort of with logic, right? Women tend to be more nurturing. No offense to any of the wonderful gentlemen in the, in the crowd, but uh, um, it sort of tends to fall to, toward women, whether it be the wife, the daughter, the grandchildren, the sister, the aunt, what have you. Um, it just sort of is the nature of that. And, and so what does that really mean? There's an impact there on lost wages, uh, productivity, stress in the marriage, um, uh, stress, maybe loss of a job, impact on the economy, and it really has um, a, a spiral effect, if you will. Um, next slide, please. 
So about Alzheimer's, um, I'm not going to go into sort of the clinical background of, of sort of in the diagnosis of al Alzheimer's. That's not really the intention here. It's really to give you sort of a broad, broad scope of uh, view. Um, but it is progressive. Um, there, unfortunately, today is no cure. And we'll talk about sort of how do you make yourself part of the solution. Um, but Alzheimer's is a progressive disease. It comes with emotional and mental changes and physical uh, ones as well. Um, it's not reversible, but you can do things. Um, actually, uh, Cindy was kind enough to give us uh, Oreo cookie, I mean, Oreo cookie, excuse me, um, raisin cookies. So have the raisin, not the chocolate chip tonight, because that will actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> actually, cinnamon, um, they're, they're the Mediterranean diet, there are things out there, again, alzheimers.org, um, that can help you today. It's sort of, I don't want to say it's common sense, but for all of us, right, better living, you live longer, healthier, healthier joints, bones, head, all of that. Um, it sort of follows, but um, it really is about a healthier lifestyle, and that's sort of the only, if you will, common sense uh, uh, cause of prevention right now. There are five drugs currently on the market. None of them actually treat the disease. What they do is they treat the symptoms. So Cognix is one of the drugs I mentioned. It came out back in uh, 1993. Um, uh, er, I mean, I'll just name a couple of them because sort of they may, you may say, oh yeah, I've heard of that. Um, Aricept, um, Razadine, uh, Nemenda, and Exelon, those are all drugs. And they treat individuals at various stages during uh, the disease. The sad part about these drugs is that they typically, the statistics say that they treat individuals for 6 to 12 months and have efficacy in half of the individuals for that period of time. So, you know, it's sort of, it's, it really is um, working with individuals with Alzheimer's and, and dementia symptoms. Um, it's a very delicate, if you will, cocktail mix um, in terms of their, their uh, medication regimen. And it's a, a constant balance uh, of, of making sure that, that that balance is right. Next slide. So, the early warning slides, uh, signs of Alzheimer's are here. Um, I'm not going to read the slide to you, but I, I do want to just give you a, a moment just to look at them. And once again, we're going to be talking a lot about this in the second seminar, because we're going to be talking about how these relate to whether or not, because these are symptoms that could be symptoms of a lot of stuff, but are also symptoms of Alzheimer's. So the question is at that point, kind of how do you figure it? We're going to talk about kind of what doctors you can talk to, you, the, the role of geriatric care managers, a number of other things. And I think what's, what's important here is that, um, again, for those of you touched with this, you know, for, for those not touched with this, sort of it's a slide. Okay, that kind of makes sense. For those of you touched with this, you can appreciate things like a simple list of, honey, do these three things while I'm gone. Take the laundry out, get the mail from the mailbox, and put the dishes in the sink. Become incredibly, incredibly difficult for an individual that was Alzheimer's. Um, and that's not to say someone, it's someone, you know, sort of in the mild to moderate Alzheimer's uh, stage. Um, we actually um, uh, provide a, a sort of an experiential tour where we actually put people sort of in a, a, a sort of gown you up and sort of put you in the shoes of someone that has that experience. And it, for individuals with Alzheimer's, it can be physically painful. People have neuropathy, so walking is hard. Their vision is impaired. Um, they're um, sort of spatially, it's very difficult to sort of define where's the table, where's the, you know, uh, there can be double vision. It's a very, very confusing uh, emotional uh, uh, disease and, and that causes isolation, it causes fear. So if you're an individual that is experiencing these things, you know, sort of, it's, it's not uncommon for individuals to sort of not want to talk about it, right? Because what's going to happen? I'm gonna, they're going to send me for a test, and then I'm going to be taken out of my home, and, and then, you know, I'm not going to be Frank or Mary, right? Um, um, but it is, uh, early treatment is very important to manage the symptoms. Um, the, the positive is, and, and I know this from sort of my other, the day job, as Arthur mentioned, is that um, keeping your mind mentally stimulated on a regular basis uh, is, is very important. And, and whether that's sort of going to the museum or reading books or painting or singing, all of those activities uh, for individuals that have uh, been diagnosed with Alzheimer's are, are very important. So sort of sitting sedentary and standing at the, 
the TV, as I tell my dad all the time, shut that thing off. Get out and, you know, get, get some fresh air, talk with some friends, go golfing, play bocce, do whatever you want to do, but you got to get out there and get your, be physically active and, and mentally active. Um, um, the isolation is just really important. People develop a fear. They de develop a fear, I fell once. If I fall again, I remember my daughter said, we can't keep dealing with this, right? We've got to get some help or we're gonna, we gotta, we gotta get you someplace where you won't fall because I just kind of can't keep running home to help you mom or dad um, because I'm too scared and, and on and on and on. So the, the, the signs are, are, are there, they're very real. And the key, as Arthur will, uh, when you sort of the, the carrot, if you will, to the next session is how do you cope with them? How do you cope with them as a loved one and, and help someone? Because it is so hard. As so many of my Absolutely. clients, as I always say, the hard part about Alzheimer's is other diseases are diseases. Alzheimer's is an embarrassment. It's not kind of acknowledged to be a disease. It's just, oh, I can't believe. And, and as a result, so often with spouses, they'll take, of course you want, you take care of your spouse and you don't want your spouse to be embarrassed, just like you don't want to be embarrassed. And so all of a sudden you stop visiting anybody. You stop, you know, you don't, kind of don't want your kids to come over. Oh, how are things? You know, the kid's calling from Colorado. Oh, fine, everything's fine. We're good, right? <laughs> it's so hard, where, 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 where actually the socialization that comes from getting out actually slows down the dementia.